All right, hello everybody. Welcome to another video for Bio 100 Week 7, where we're talking about scientific results in general in this module. And in this video in particular, I wanted to talk a little bit about figure captions. So one of the things that are in results sections are figures, and associated with each of those figures is a caption. So in this video, I'll talk about what those are, where you find them, and how you would write your own figure caption. So first of all, just so we're all on the same page, what is a figure? A figure is either a graph. So here on the very far left, we have an example um, like box plots, for instance, that we've looked at previously. A box plot would be an example of a graph that could be a figure. A figure could also be something like a picture. So here in the middle, we have an example of a picture. This is from a review paper I wrote recently where I was showing different organisms that certain types of studies have been done on. So a figure can be a picture or a figure could also be something like a sampling map that shows where you're collected your individuals from. So here on the right, I have a, an example of a sampling map. Um, if you remember from one of the previous examples I used in the video, I talked about um, individuals collected from different geographic sites in California. So a figure could also be something showing a sampling map. So it could be a graph, a picture, or a sampling map. And then where do you find a figure caption? The figure caption is something that's located below the figure itself. So this is an example from Ballerini et al. 2018. If some of these images look familiar, that's because this is very similar to what we did in a previous week where in class we were phenotyping different flowers and saying whether they had spurs or not. So like this one we can see here has a spur. This one does not have a spur. So this is an example of a figure from Dr. Ballerini's paper. And in general, when you're looking for figure captions, those are the things located directly under the figure itself. And what is a figure caption? So a figure caption in general is a standalone description of the data that's shown in the figure. Again, that can be either a graph or a picture like we just saw with the flowers from Dr. Ballerini's paper. And what that means that it's standalone is that someone looking at the figure can understand it, even if they haven't read the rest of the paper. So what that means is that you have to provide enough context, context within that caption for the figure that the reader is going to be able to understand it independently. So that's what's here. That caption provides all the relevant information to be able to understand the figure. So let's look at another example from Ballerini et al. 2019. So here on the left, we have a Venn diagram. And if you remember, Dr. Visger introduced Venn diagrams to us in a previous video. And the idea here is that any regions of overlap, for instance, in the middle here, those are items that are shared by all three of those different groups. So this Venn diagram in particular is looking at genes that were differentially expressed. So what that means is that the expression level of mRNA was different between different groups. And here, what this Venn diagram is looking at, the different groups are individuals that have spurs. So those are these guys here, the spurred taxon versus um, e. calcarata, which is the one that does not have spurs. So what this Venn diagram is looking at is comparing the number of genes that show different expression um, relative to this spurless taxa. And so what I want you, and so this here on the right, this is just for context, so we can see what we're looking at here with this Venn diagram. And so um, if we look here at this Venn diagram, we see that it's figure four. We see that it says um, genes that are upregulated and spurred taxa relative to A. calcarata. Upregulated just means that the genes have a higher expression. So what we're looking at here are all of the genes that have a higher expression and those that have the spurs versus those that don't. And so the caption here says, Venn diagram of genes differentially expressed between each spurred taxon and A. calcarata. 
So what I want you to think about here is whether this figure caption is self-explanatory. In other words, can you interpret the figure as is or you do you need some additional information to fully understand what's going on in this Venn diagram? So I'll give you a minute to pause the video and think to yourself. Okay, so if we look here in this Venn diagram, as I explained before, these numbers here where the groups overlap are showing genes in the middle, for instance, those are all the genes that were upregulated in all of the three of the spurred taxa. One piece of information that is not currently in the figure caption is what these letters mean. So this figure caption as is would not be self-explanatory because we don't know what these letters stand for, right? And so if we were to add something like here on the right, the blue um, slash S symbol um, indicates um, the Sibirica species, the red slash F is Formosa, and then the yellow is Chrysantha. And just to clarify, this figure caption is great as is in the publication. I'm the one that butchered it to make a point. Um, but I want what I wanted to demonstrate to you is that in order for something to be self-explanatory, we have to make sure we're explaining all of the symbols that are used in that figure so the reader can understand it. So Next, what I wanted to do is talk a little bit about what actually should be included in a figure caption. So one of the first things we should have is a description of the results that are shown in the graph. That's kind of the main point of a caption is to give you a little brief sentence about what we're looking at. Another thing you want in that figure caption is an explanation of what specific data is graphed. And if you have error bars, what those error bars indicate. So for example, if you graphed the mean plus or minus the standard deviation, you would need to indicate that in the figure caption so the reader looking at that figure can know what you're plotting in that graph. So here we have an example of this going back to our handy dandy empty cars data set. And what we have here on the y-axis is miles per gallon and we're looking at how that is different across cars that have different number of gears and also a different number of cylinders. And so if we wanted in our figure caption to make it really clear what we were graphing, we would want to say something that like this graph shows the average miles per gallon plus or minus the standard deviation by number of cylinders and number of gears. So if we just had this title for the graph that's listed here, it says mileage by number of cylinders and number of gears, we don't know specifically what the height of each bar is and what those error bars indicate. So that's where we would wanna make sure and be explicit in the figure caption to say that it's the average plus or minus the standard deviation. Other things we want to include in our figure caption are the sample size. So that's often written as n equals 3. The sample size is the number of replicates or the number of individuals you sampled from that population. So if we think back to our experiment we did, in, our simulated experiment that we did in class where we were looking at the CFU per mil um, in the different mice, when we had the Let's do, when we had the group only, we had n equals 3, and then our section wide was n equals 30. And so that's something you also want to indicate in your figure caption, is how many individuals are in each of these groups that you're representing in your figure. Another thing we want to show on our figure caption is how the data were collected or where the data are from. And then lastly, we also want to include a description of what the statistical tests indicate for this data, and that includes any relevant statistical test values. So if you think back to the ANOVAs that we covered last week, um, I'll go ahead and give you a minute to think to yourself, what were the two values for an ANOVA that we are important to look at and that we want to report? 
Right. So hopefully you remember that we're interested in both the F value and the P value. So those are two things you would want to include in your figure caption. Okay, so for the last example in this video, I'm going to go back um, to some fish egg data. Um, and so here we have an example from Duke et al. 2018. You are already looking at an excerpt from this paper and actually this actual graph for um, some of the homework and one of the online quizzes you did just previously to this video. So here we have um, the average spring summer fish eggs on the y-axis, average winter temperature on the x-axis. And so we have the figure caption down here because that's small and hard to read, I've blown it up here, so it's located here on the right. And what I want you to do is take a minute on your own, read through the figure caption here, and try to underline and identify what each of those, where each of those five components that we just talked about are located here in this figure caption. So go ahead and pause the video um, and identify those five different components on your own. Okay, so hopefully you've paused the video and then unpause it now. So if we look at the caption for this figure, it says figure six, spring and summer, March to August, average plus or minus standard deviation, fish egg abundance plotted against previous average winter temperature, December to February for each year. Fish eggs were collected from the Scripps Institution of Oceanography Pier, and there is a significant negative correlation between winter temperatures and spring-summer spawning, with an R-squared value of 0.83, a p-value of less than 0.05. So if we go to this next slide here, here I have color-coded where the different pieces of information are that we just talked about. So in red here, we have that brief description of the results. Here in green, we have indicated what is plotted on the graph. So um, the points here indicate the average number of fish eggs, and then these error bars here indicate that standard deviation. In purple here, we have information about where the data are from. So in this case, they were collected from the SIO peer. And then at the very bottom here in magenta, we have some information about what the statistical tests indicate for this particular set of data. And so there was a negative correlation between winter temperatures and spring summer spawning. And then here we have those important values from the statistical test. So for a linear, linear regression, which we talked about in the past, we have our R squared value, a higher R squared value indicates a higher correlation between those two different variables. And then we have our P value, which is less than 0.05, which indicates that relationship is significant. Another thing I want to point out here is that here in the underlined portions, just like we talked about in the Venn diagram example where we needed to define what the different colors and what the different symbols indicated, here we also are defining the season. So if you look at the axes, it says average spring to summer and average winter temperature. Another thing that this figure caption does is explicitly define what months are included in those different seasons. So spring and summer, they included as March to August, and winter temperature was December to February. So again, that's information that helps you fully interpret the figure and lets it stand alone without you having to go back and look up what different months are included in which different seasons, because I would have to do that. I don't know what the official months are off the top of my head. Do you think that anything is missing in this figure caption? So we said that there were five different components that you would want to include in a figure caption. Here I've only highlighted four different things. What do you think is missing that could be added to make this figure even more, this figure caption even more informative? Right, so something that was not indicated was the sample size. So we might want to add something right here, for instance, that talks about um, what the sample sizes were for each of these different points. We have one, two, three, four, five points on the graph. 
So we might want to add something that says number of collection days varied slightly for each year for 2012 to 2013, n equals 50, 2013 to 2014, n equals 32, etc. So that would add information about sample size into our figure caption, which would make it even more informative. Okay, so that concludes everything I wanted to cover to give you a brief introduction to figure captions. Please go back to the Canvas module and find the figure captions quiz and take that quiz to test your knowledge and apply it to some new scenarios. And I will see you again soon.